Hello everyone, bringing you a video today looking at this and this is a New Zealand made uh, pixie or twiggy greens shirt uh, which came from a set of uniform which included trousers as well unfortunately don't have a pair of the trousers uh, the name the naming convention of course is completely a nickname uh, no official uh, recognition of that designation at all uh, but this is based upon or, or basically the same cut as an Australian shirt uh, an Australian produced shirt that was also intended for use in Vietnam introduced to use in Vietnam uh, this was to supplement and intended to eventually replace the various other uniforms that New Zealand troops were wearing in Vietnam, which were of great variety, uh, certainly in the early days. Um, you see photographs of men wearing Australian produced jungle green uniform or greens as, as they were known, uh, British air techs clothing, um, some locally tailored uh, within the region, so Hong Kong and various other places, some men wearing tailored bush jackets and so forth and shirts. And even the British wool shirt made an appearance as well. Might seem odd in Vietnam, but actually in hot climates, wool does have certain uh, good properties. Absorb sweat, the sweat can evaporate and cool the body. Very hard wearing as well, of course. Um, but that, uh, there was a whole mishmash of things. And then obviously this went in produ into production. It's basically the same cut, essentially, as the Australian shirt with the angled pocket flaps at the front and everything. So you have two breast uh, flap pockets. Uh, it can be worn tucked in or untucked. That was the intention to allow better ventilation, um, although you often see them tucked in uh, in the end um, for the sake of smartness. I think uh, Commonwealth armies, certainly the British Army, still has a bit of a problem when it comes to being asked to wear things that are essentially a shirt untucked, um, as was shown with PCS. That's another story. Um, the uniform, in contrast, I believe the Australian uh, uniform was made of more of a poplar material. This is made of drill, uh, green drill material. The buttons are essentially what you would expect to find on a British battle dress or the brace buttons on combat trousers and things. They're still of that pattern. Whereas on Australian produced uh, pixie shirts, uh, they were uh, more of an American pattern. So that's a slight difference as well between the two. Uh, the reason for the nicknames, um, the uniform was quite closely cut to the body. Uh, so pixie, twiggy, uh, slim fit basically uh, was the, the reason for the nicknaming. Um, as far as I'm aware anyway, there may be other stories behind that and I'd be interested to read them in the comments if, if other people know other stories of, of where the nicknames came from. But uh, that's uh, the, the front of the uniform there. You can see we'll move this around now and we'll have a look at the arms and so forth and the, the other details of the, the uniform, the uh, shirt. Okay, on the left hand side here you can see we do have an epaulette at the top there on the shoulder and then we have uh, an arm, a pocket on the arm here. This one isn't really pleated. Um, although it's been sewn on with a bit of a pleat at the bottom there. This doesn't have much of a pleat in it. Simple square flap at the top again with a single button and the cuffs are uh, buttoned as well. I believe, I think these should have two buttons for adjustment but one of them is unfortunately missing. It's been pulled off and this one's about to come off so we'll need some sewing uh, to um, to uh, reaffix that uh, or fix it firmly again uh, because that's uh, hanging by a thread as, uh, as the uh, saying goes. Uh, we'll turn this right around now, we can have a look at the back. You can see at the back here, um, one piece down the back, no seams or anything apart from across the shoulders here because you have a double thickness over the shoulders um, to give uh, obviously where you, your web equipment's going to rub most to give a bit of reinforcement over there. Otherwise very plain at the back. You can see a bit of what I'm talking about here with the quite slim fit, particularly around the hips and so forth there. Um, it's not a, a baggy garment by any means. Um, obviously simple collar around the back there. We'll move it around now and have a look at the right arm. Okay, so this is the right-hand side of the uniform, the right-hand side of the shirt, and you can see here on this arm there's a heavily pleated pocket. This essentially follows the dimensions of the dressing pocket, which we'll find on utility battle dress trousers and British combats of this time period, uh, with a large double pleat down the middle there, intended to take a dressing, as far as I'm aware. Uh, that, would, I believe, was the, the purpose of this pocket, is to take a field dressing. Um, and it's perfectly shaped for that. It will take one very nicely. Obviously you have um, a, this simple square pocket flap again. In terms of the arm pockets and so forth, this is quite um, advanced design in that regard. It's not something you'd see on British clothing, the sort of dedicated dressing pocket on the arm, as opposed to on the trousers until the 1980s. So quite forward thinking in that regard. At the end, you can see the two buttons at the cuff there. Um, and then this again, unfortunately is missing the second button, which would allow some adjustment on the cuff. But I will replace those at some point. I have plenty of plastic buttons, uh, so can easily replace that. Here you can see the label, giving no room for ignorance of exactly who owns this shirt. Um, you can see the sizing there, it's a 36 stroke 38 regular, ideal, my size. Uh, and you can see there, the height is actually given in more detail in the chest and everything, 
uh, further down, uh, and then the Grayson Shirts Limited, the manufacturer, and the date, 1969. So there we are, that's a look at this New Zealand made uniform, this New Zealand made shirt. Uh, as I say, there were a pair of trousers that went with this as well. Unfortunately, I don't have a pair of those, something to, to look out for in the future. I would like to get a pair of the trousers too. Uh, but an interesting piece of um, New Zealand's Vietnam era new uniform uh, and sort of part of the development of their uh, combat clothing, I suppose. So quite interesting from that point of view of, of the DPM shirts and things I have. Uh, this predates those. Um, but uh, as I say, it's interesting again because it shows the Australian influence, British influence, and obviously uh, the some American influence in the design of the cut and so forth with the, the angled pockets and, and so on. So uh, quite a, a mishmash of different uh, design ethoses, I guess, from that point of view. So again, always interesting. I always like that sort of thing. Uh, but that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, if you like this sort of content and you'd like to see more, then please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. Uh, and if you're new to subscribing or already subscribed, do make sure you've hit the little bell, the little notification button, make sure you click that so that you're alerted when I upload future videos. Uh, there's also a Facebook and an Instagram page, the usual plug for those, links in the description. Please do check them out. They're worth having a look at, in my humble opinion, and it's very humble. Um, but uh, that's everything for now. So until next time, bye for now.